Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.6 and DECA Ironworks Simulations GF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 6, WMD7 Targeting Pod. Today we're going to go over the basics of operating the WMD7 targeting pod on the JF-17. This is a very similar pod to the Lightning AT. It has a CCD sensor, a forward-looking infrared sensor, and a laser ranger slash designator, in much the same way as the Western pods do. Uh, something missing from this pod that the Western pods have is the infrared marker, the infrared laser beam that's visible in night vision goggles. Uh, this aircraft doesn't, sorry, this pod in fact does not have that feature, uh, but apart from that, very, very similar. Resolution of the sensors is quite high, it produces a really nice, clear image, uh, and it, it can be carried on the center line station here uh, on the JF 17. Um, so this is a pretty standard air-to-ground loadout I've got here. Fuel tanks, WMD-7, and 4 times GBU-12s. Uh, this is probably something that you would commonly uh, carry in the air-to-ground role. Uh, and today I'll show you how to operate the pod in air-to-ground mode. So without any further ado, let's get this aircraft started up and in the air, and I will join you en route to a target area. Okay, so here we are back in the aircraft and at altitude. Uh, let's uh, get the aircraft set up and ready to go with the WMD-7. So one of the first things that you want to do is check your avionics power switches down here. And we're interested in the CLDP switch. This needs to be on. This is the power for the pod. Uh, with that on, oops, let me see if I can move my camera. Uh, what I'm going to do is get the aircraft into air to ground mode and configure the pod to display in the center display. So uh, I'm going to move my T1 switch aft and that puts us into air to ground master mode. I'm then going to, on the center display here, let's actually focus down on that a little bit. Uh, we're going to press main menu. We're going to go into the pod menu and in pod, we've got the various different types of pod that the aircraft can carry. WMD-7 is in green, uh, uh, kind of confirming to us that the pod is on board. Let's select the pod, and the first thing it says to us is WMD-7 pod off. Uh, so this is how the pod will be uh, as per default when you first select it. So you've got a bunch of selections around the screen. We'll quickly go over the ones we've got here just now uh, and we'll add to those after we power the pod on. WMD7 here, by clicking that I can switch to other pods if I'm carrying other pods, but I'm not today. We've got the main power switch here, currently in off. We've got the main mode for the pod. It can be in SP for snowplow or it can be in slave. In snowplow mode, when you haven't locked anything, when you basically reset the pod, it will face forwards in a snowplow configuration. In slave mode, when you reset it, it will always reset to your current sensor point of interest. By default, that's going to be your current waypoint, but if you have defined another sensor point of interest, it will recenter on that. Down the right hand side, we have options to enable the LSS, which is the laser spot search. We also have the option to change the code. This is something that you're going to want to do before using laser guided weapons or buddy lasing. So if I go ahead and pr press code, uh, my buttons along the sides allow me to change the laser uh, spot search and laser designator code and it will appear at the bottom. So I'm going to go for one, six, eight, seven, and that's now reprogrammed. Uh, refocus will simply run the autofocus uh, to give you a clear image. Uh, you've also got level and gain settings down the side. They're not going to do anything until the pod is on. And in cage will allow you to cage the pod or uncage the pod. When the pod is caged, it's effectively facing inwards on itself. Uh, and that protects the uh, the kind of front of the pod where the, the lens covers and things like that are. Uh, so when you're not using the pod, you would tend to cage it. So let's go ahead and power the pod on. It's currently warning us that the pod is masked, and that's because it's caged. This flashing indication will appear whenever the pod is not able to see anything. Let's press cage, and the pod will immediately uncage, and because it's in snowplow mode, it's facing forwards. If I flipped it into slave mode, it would immediately point at our current waypoint, which is waypoint 1. Let's put it back into snowplow for now. So in this mode, we have a couple more options. We have CCD, which allows us to switch between CCD and infrared cameras. 
When we're in the infrared camera mode, we have an additional option at the top here to flip between white hot and black hot modes. We also have the option for wide and narrow field of view. Uh, LSS we've covered, code we've covered. Auto is for the mode of the laser designator. Automatic means the laser will automatically fire a set period after deploying your laser guided bomb or other laser guided weapon. In manual mode, you will need to toggle your laser on and off yourself. And this is achieved, um, this is something that you would need to do if you were uh, buddy lasing or similar. So, uh, we're normally going to leave that in auto. Refocus, as I said, that will redo the autofocus if for whatever reason it's gone wrong. Gain and levels uh, will allow you to control the image quality. Levels being a kind of um, contrast setting and gain being the actual gain of the image, otherwise known as brightness. So, we've got a nice image coming up there. Inside the display, uh, we have the crosshairs and the dot. The dot shows the current orientation of the pod. Uh, these um, corners are to show you where the narrow field of view would be. Uh, they're also used during zoom, but I'll cover that in just a moment. We also have a green indicator here for the azimuth and a green indicator here for the elevation, and they will move as we move the pod around. Confirmation of your laser code and confirmation of the master arm setting. We're currently armed. Also inside here, we have the coordinates and range to the currently uh, defined sensor point of interest. At the current time, I don't have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back to CCD. We're now going to cover the HOTAS controls. So uh, the HOTAS controls for the WMD are pretty similar to those used for the radar. Um, T5 is your TDC with a depress to do uh, a sensor point of interest lock. It will initially try to do a point track, and if it fails to do a point track, it will automatically do an area track. Unlike with the, the Western pods, you don't have manual control over what type of track you're going to do. The pod kind of works it out for itself. And then everything else is controlled using the S2 switch, the sensor control switch. So if I press sensor control switch forward, I go narrow field of view. If I press aft, I go wide field of view. If I press left, I toggle between infrared and CCD. And while I'm in infrared, if I press sensor control switch to the right, it will toggle between black hot and white hot modes. So if I go ahead and use my T5 to slew, here we go, I can slew the pod around, and you will see that the dot uh, and the elevation uh, indications are showing us the current orientation of the pod. And I can depress, and that's me now set my sensor point of interest. It's confirmed on the HSD with a blue diamond. Uh, we're also it updates the uh, the coordinates and the range. And if I go up onto the HUD, on the HUD where the pod is looking is always going to be a circle with a dot and the sensor point of interest will always be represented by a diamond. And because that diamond is actually currently off the edge of the HUD, we have an arrow showing us which way to go to get to it. Uh, and again, information about the sensor point of interest is repeated here on the HUD. Range 7.3 miles, and it's uh, 3 minutes 45 seconds flight time to get to that target. Um, that's pretty much all the information you get on the HUD. So let's go back down to the pod here. And we're going to uh, move it around a bit. Let's move it over here. And if I press S2 depress, because I'm in snowplow mode, it's immediately going to bring me back uh, to my kind of forward looking view. If I switch it into slave mode, it's going to immediately go to my uh, sensor point of interest, which is currently waypoint one. If I use my radar elevation controls, I can change my zoom. Now, the zoom is quite odd in this pod, so <laughs> if you have it as an axis, as I do, as you push the axis forwards, you'll see that the uh, the edges of the box get smaller and smaller, and then when I center it, the pod immediately zooms to that point. So basically what you're doing is you can pull back or pull forwards and just put those corners uh, where you want your field of view to be. So say that I want to get uh, this feature here just into the edge of my view. I'm going to zoom until my corner is about there and then release and 
fair enough. There it is. It's inside my field of view at that point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, FOV in. Uh, this is a, a, an airfield, which is my currently selected point of interest. So I'm going to zoom in a bit more. If you do smaller zoom movements, it kind of steps a little bit like that. But if you do fast ones, it doesn't actually update the display. So anyway, I'm going to move my... A cursor over this building. I'm going to depress. It actually achieved a point track. That's unusual. Often it would fail and go into an area track. Uh, I've now created a sensor point of interest. If I move my pod away from that and then I press S to depress, it's unlocking that sensor point of interest. I've now basically dumped that. You can see range is now zero. So if I go across here, choose another one, depress, oh, it jumped to that tree. There we go. Now it's doing the building and it's in an area track. Uh, and I'm getting a range and I've got a set of coordinates and I could hand that off to somebody else if I wanted to do so. Um, if someone is buddy lazing for you, make sure you have the code set correctly and then simply turn on LSS and you'll see it flashing just like that. Uh, once you actually pick up a laser, your pod will jump to that particular point of view. Uh, and you can press it again to turn it off. And whenever you see LSR, that means the laser is in ranging mode and it's just taking a quick uh, check of the, the range. One last thing to note is how to manually fire the laser in the event that you're going to buddy laser for somebody. You need to switch your laser designator out of auto into manual mode and you need to make sure that you have assigned on your HOTAS the laser designator on off switch. I've mapped it to mine and I can press it now and I can see that LSD is flashing. By default, it has a timeout. It'll eventually turn off once this timer hits zero. And my code is flashing just to remind me the code that I am transmitting. Uh, if I look up on the HUD, there's actually not really any indication on the HUD that I'm uh, that I'm lazing. But uh, certainly on the pod, you've got this flashing LSD. If I press laser de laser designator again and it's off, and it's back into LSR, which is the ranging mode, and that's the default mode. Uh, and that is basically all of the functionality of the pod. Uh, like I said, it produces a really good image, really clear. It's usable in day and night. It has CCD and infrared cameras, uh, and it's pretty easy to use, I would say. Not really all that much to it. So, I hope you all enjoyed that, and you found that useful. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you all next time.